Welcome back everybody, this is Eric from Moss Pawn and Gun and today we're going to do another how-to video for you. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, you know, we go through a good bit of effort to make this happen for you. We want to make sure you guys are getting the information you need. Today uh, we're going to be in installing one of the ATI Mauser stocks. Uh, it's a pretty neat little setup. Uh, you've got the stock itself, which uh, you know has a very futuristic looking contour to it. Uh, very comfortable in the hand. Um, you know, it is just an injection uh, molded uh, stock. Very solid arrangement. Um, it comes with a scope mount that actually sits on top of the rifle. Um, it's held in place. Uh, you'll see as we install it how it's held in place, but it's pretty solid arrangement. Um, let's get to it. There's not really a whole lot to this. We're going to go ahead and get this installed. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit real quick about the types of Mauser rifles uh, that this stock will work with. It will not work with small ring Mausers. So unfortunately, no uh, Model 96s, Model 38s, uh, any of your Swedish Mausers, of course, are not going to work. It will work with an intermediate action like one of the Yugo Mausers or uh, most standard large ring actions. Uh, the instructions, of course, give you a list of guns that it will and won't work with, so forth. This particular gun is a Brazilian contract FN that has a busted stock. So we're going to, of course, replace the stock with a sporter type stock. Now one interesting thing about the ATI stock that I like a lot is the fact that you don't have to permanently modify your gun in any way. So if you've got a nice Persian or if you've got you know, a really sweet Gewehr 98 or something and you want to try your hand at putting it in a stock and scoping it, uh, this gives you the ability to do that without having to permanently modify your firearm. Um, first step, of course, we're going to go ahead and completely disassemble this uh, Mauser rifle. If you don't know about Mauser rifle disassembly, there's probably tons of videos uh, on the internet that you can look up. I'm going to go ahead and perform that task now, get the gun apart, and we're going to move on with the installation process. Of course, once you've disassembled your gun, before you uh, go on to do anything with this setup at all, you want to double check all of the contents of the packaging. Uh, you've got a cheek piece, a couple other variety of uh, screws that you can see, of course, a washer, a uh, recoil block that's actually meant to be a spacer to uh, you know make room for different actions depending on you know what action you use you might have to have the spacer of course you can see a variety of screws you have these locking blocks that actually are clamped together and that's what uh, provides a good solid mount to the actual barrel you'll see the way it mounts in a moment um, so now that you know what's supposed to be in the package let's move on to uh, get this little guy assembled one more word on this uh, particular kit all right, it does not come with the fully bent uh, bolt handle. If you uh, need a bent bolt handle, you're going to have to purchase that separate. Uh, of course, ATI does sell that. They are easy to install. This particular rifle has a fully bent bolt, so the installation of an aftermarket bolt will not be necessary. But if you're running a Yugo rifle with a wide arc bolt or a straight bolt, like on a Turkish or other type of gun like that, uh, you will, of course, need to have a turned down bolt handle to clear the scope. Also, a word of note, uh, as I'm taking apart this Mauser rifle, of course, if you have a very nice example of a Mauser and you want to keep your old stock, make sure you bag up all your hardware, uh, label it accordingly, because you may want to return the uh, rifle to military configuration. I know some of you have very nice Mauser rifles, and if you're going to do this, you definitely want to keep all your hardware intact. As we're taking this Mauser rifle apart, upon closer examination you can see that the stock is split all the way through the tang. Now this stock is not completely trashed. In a future video we may show you how to repair something like this. so uh, It can be repaired, uh, but for now we're going to move on. I just thought that'd be interesting to note. If you're ever purchasing a Mauser rifle and you see a crack along the uh, back of the stock like that, always suspect that it could go through the action. So, uh, you know, this stock would eventually split more and more if you were to continue to shoot this in this condition. Once you have your rifle out of the stock, what you're going to do is you have to drive a pin out where the sight base is. My particular example did not have a pin in there. Of course, one is supposed to be. So we're going to proceed to go ahead and uh, remove this rear sight. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a uh, section of brass rod. And what you're going to do is you're going to drive it down and backwards and it should pop right out. Just like that, all the way across the room. 
of course your leaf spring for the rear sight it'll pull out but if it doesn't want to pull out without undue force usually there's like a little tick mark on the base of this thing about in this area right here you can take a punch and just drag it through that little notch and push it you know gently and it'll ride right out all right we've disassembled the uh, Mauser rifle here and uh, what you're going to get left with in terms of what you're going to use is your barreled action with trigger your bolt mechanism your action screws your follower and follower spring you're not going to need the actual base plate all right uh, your trigger guard assembly stock hardware capture screws all that stuff you're going to retain because you're not going to use it for this project so we're going to get rid of that and uh, let's go ahead and move on to getting this little guy assembled of course once you get your gun taken apart that's when you want to um, inspect it check it out look it over clean it well you know do any kind of maintenance you need to do on it while it's apart obviously you've already got it apart you might as well clean it so I'm going to go ahead and proceed to clean my bolt mechanism get everything ready to install and uh, we're going to move on all right, this is where we're going to be installing the scope mount. This is the next step in the process once everything's cleaned up, stripped. These two clamps, of course, they go right here. And you see that there's a step on the inside of them that corresponds to the step in the barrel. All right, and you'll also notice that if you push them together, you'll see that the top side is going to have shorter screws than the bottom. So obviously your longer 1032s are going to go on the bottom. So what you'll do is you're going to go ahead and um, take your 1032, put it in the top, just kind of start it by hand, just so it holds it for you like that. So I grab my pair of 1032 cap screws, and we're just going to loosely get them started because we're going to actually have to lay the uh, scope mount on top and go ahead and get that uh, lined up and tightened down before we do anything else. So we're just going to sort of get these started and then the same thing on the bottom uh, and this process is fairly straightforward it's not difficult uh, the main thing is just to take your time and um, you know pay attention to what you're doing all right and same thing on the bottom we're just going to get those started make sure you're taking your time you don't want to cross thread anything on the bottom screws you want to leave those backed out a pretty good bit If you want to put Loctite, that's fine. I mean, you don't want anything uh, going loose on you, so go ahead and use some Loctite if you want. I'll probably go ahead and back these screws out and uh, add Loctite now that I think about it. I wouldn't recommend the red. I would go with uh, blue Loctite if you're going to use it for this purpose. All right, you can see here that we got our four holes facing up, like the instructions say, and then we got our screws loosely started. No big deal. All right, we're going to take the scope mount itself and we're going to place it over the top and we're going to get everything kind of lined up here all right we're getting the last 832 cap screw now you want to kind of tighten these in like a crisscross pattern kind of like when you put your uh you know wheels on in car if any of you change your own wheels now be careful not to over tighten these because these the base that these screw into it is aluminum and it will strip so um, we're just going to go ahead and get these tightened down. I mean, if it feels like you tighten them too much, you probably are. All right, so just, just be mindful of that. They will strip, and you don't want that to happen. But you want to make sure they're tight. This is probably the most single most important part of this particular build, or this style of build, is to make sure you got proper torque on these screws. All right, at this point, what you're going to do, you're going to grab your stock, and you're just going to do a little bit of a preliminary fit check. And what you want to look for is for all of these screw holes to line up where all of these uh, screws go. And then you also just want to make sure the action fits nice and flush, uh, which in this case it does. One thing that I had to do on the rear, on the tang, I had to actually inlet it just a little bit. Remember, these are injection molded parts, so some fitting may be required. That's normal, as with any injection molded uh, product. All right, once you've checked for the fit of the stock and you're happy with the way everything lines up, then you're finally going to go ahead and uh, tighten your bottom two screws on the mount. We're going to go ahead and do that now. 
Again, it is aluminum, people. Don't over-tighten. That's a pretty damn solid arrangement. I think it's going to be just fine. All right, after we've uh, tightened up the scope mount base and we're going ahead and uh, put the stock onto the rifle, what we're going to do is I'm going to take a bright light and we're going to shine in here and we're going to look. I know it's going to be hard to see, but you want the recoil lug in the stock flat up against the recoil shoulder of the action. All right, and you can see there's a noticeable space back there. So I'm going to remove the stock and place the spacer in there. Now, if you look in there and the recoil bearing surface on the receiver is, is touching the stock, then you're, you're going to be just fine. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, but at that point, we're pretty much going to torque everything down and double check, make sure everything looks good. Now, every rifle's different um, in terms of the type of spacing arrangement that you're going to get and with the action and everything. So what you want to do, uh, if you see a gap, go ahead and install the spacer and then tighten down your screws and check to make sure everything's nice and tight. So that's what we're going to do right now. You know, Mauser actions have a lot of little variations and differences with them. So we're just going to double check those. Alright, everything looks good to me, so what we're going to do is uh, start adding these other screws to lock everything down. Alright, the long screws that they give you in the package, the shorter of the two, you're going to use for the front. Uh, these two holes here, and all that's for is just to lock the stock down nice and flush so it looks nice. Alright, once those screws are in place in the back, one on either side, the gun's pretty much ready to uh, mount a scope on and uh, take to the range and check her out and see how she shoots. Uh, we'll be taking it out. Of course, you're going to throw your bolt in it. Make sure the bolt clears in this case it does. And uh, that's pretty much it. But there's your little ATI uh, Mauser. All right. Everything laid in there uh, quite nice, nice and smooth, just like it uh, originally was. Uh, this would make a really wicked little SBR. Uh, if you decide you want to run like a short barrel rifle in this thing, it would look kind of cool having that uh, nice short setup. I'm not going to install the cheek piece just yet because we don't know what kind of scope we're going to run. I'll probably just put like a little fixed four power on it. Not sure, but eventually we will get out to the range with this little guy, see how well it holds a zero, and uh, just give her a try, see how it does. You guys have a good day.